Welcome back, Trinidad and Tobago. On the front page of the Guardian newspaper, well, the story says it right. Ready to run, uh, Penny happy over PNM selection and set for the Arima uh, MP run after the quarantine. And that's what's on the front page of the Guardian newspaper. A quick reference there to our interview. And as I mentioned this morning, um, I want to say kudos to all of the women who have decided to enter the political fray. Gender equality is one of the milestones of a truly developed nation, but it's also good to see when women are always entering and representing. And one woman who has been in the public eye and she has shown, and I told her this morning, grace under fire in every circumstance, and now she's bringing her charm and also her experience into a seat that she once held, and she's ready to go again. Penny, ready to run for Rima. Joining us on the line at this time, Pen Penelope Beckles Robinson. Good morning. How are you? Hi, Rima. Really nice to talk to you again. It has been a little while. It has been a little while, and I want to say, well, congratulations on the nod that you've gotten from the screening committee. Thank you very much. Let's start, you know, first of all, how did, oh, you, to most people, you had a pretty comfortable position sitting out there in the U.S. of A, at the U.N., you know, the decision to run again. What prompted you to say, you know, I'm going to enter what can be a very heated political race, and you know what politics is like. You, you've seen the good, bad, and the ugly in politics. So what made you decide, I'm going to enter electoral politics again? Well, uh, I think it's, you know, I'm home from time to time, um, and once I'm home, I'm, I always visit a Rima, um, and really it's the, the request by the people of Arima to, to serve again. I mean, it, as a politician, there is, there is no better feeling when you know that people have appreciated the work that you have done as a member of parliament, um, as someone involved in the community, and I think that's really my motivating factor. Um, the fact that I've now acquired additional skill set whilst at the UN means that I can bring a different perspective um, in terms of my representation. Of course, Arima is an absolutely beautiful place. I don't think people know how large the constituency is with the villages of Black Chichens, Lafayette, Malanaqua, and the North Coast. Um, you know, going all the way to the south, almost bounding with La Hoqueta and bounding with Brandy as well as down there with um, Gabri and looking over on it. What would you bring to the people of Arima? You know, the Arima seat has been, has gone PNM. You know, it's, it's considered one of, the, one of the PNM strongholds, really. What can yeah. you bring differently to the level of representation? What is, your, what is your promise? And you've served there before. So what is your promise to the people in 2020? Okay, well, first of all, when you talk about bringing something different, first of all, I just want to acknowledge the work of, uh, of the sitting MP, Mr. Anthony Garcia, and, and by no means that will I belittle his contribution. Um, for me, it's a question of, of what I offer. Um, it's really up to the screening committee to decide on the candidate. Um, but I want to continue a lot of the work I did whilst I was there, as well as continue some of the work that Mr. Garcia has been doing. For me, my I see one of my strengths um, being the issue of accessibility. Um, having such a close relationship with the people that, you know, I recognize that all the communities are important. You know, I think of Arima being a smart city. I think of the history of the digital platform. Um, you know, I think of where Arima is located. It's a, it's a basket. It's a, it's a hub. It's a location where uh, many people come to Arima, especially in the market, which is really a special place for me coming from, whether it's from Matlas, whether it's from Tamina whether it's from Mayaro, whether it's from Sandy Brandy, but it's a place that people love to congregate. Um, and I think that gives us a golden opportunity to develop the e-government service and to offer services to people, particularly in the surrounding areas, um, um, and continue to, to, um, to cherish what Arima is special about, the indigenous community, the Carib community, the rich culture, Kitchener uh, being from there. It's also an agriculture and an industrial community, so it's to continue to harness those things um, and to make Arima the best that is possible. Looking at, and I have to ask you this question, Penny, people believe, you know, there was, oh, there's always been a huge support for you, and I think um, outside the PNM as well, whether or not you're a card-bearing mem member, you have you've gained goodwill from the people and you've been res you are respected by all. On, age, gender, political divide, you've been able to cross that. So 
some suggest that your returning to the PNM is is sort of a, I guess, basically putting aside any grievances or with the past history or any sort of animosity. Do you see it that way? Was there was there any sort of tension or animosity between what people consider the old guards in the PNM or your supporters and the supporters of the current structure in the PNM? Well, I mean, I, I think I would go straight to what you're talking about. I mean, yes, I contested the leadership in 2014, and I mean, I lost resoundingly. Um, the membership of the party spoke very clearly that the person they clearly believed was the best person to lead the PNM was Dr. Rowley. Um, I mean, I accepted my loss, um, and I continued to support him. I served under him even before I ran. Um, as well as the fact that I continue to serve under him. Um, you know, we have a good relationship. The fact that um, I challenge the leadership. Um, so some people may have been an issue, but the truth is that's part of the democracy of the party. And he has clearly demonstrated by appointing me as an ambassador that there are no hard feelings. Um, he came to the United Nations and, and you know, he was in mean, his leadership in many issues, in the, in the Venezuela issue. Well, as it relates to CARICOM, um, I mean, was exemplary. Um, and I am just extremely happy to serve under Dr. Rowley. There is, there is no vacancy, um, and therefore the issue of, um, you know, anything related to leadership really does not arise. I mean, for me, it is, I am just absolutely overjoyed and excited about being back as a member of parliament and to be on his team again to ensure victory for the PNM when the general election is called. I also want to ask, there is, a, you know, not dealing with the conspiracy theories out there, but there is a suggestion by some that you returning to the folds of the PNM is some sort of succession plan in the PNM. Well, as I just said, um, for me, um, that is not an issue that I've heard anything about. I mean, the first thing for me was actually be able to, to be selected. I mean, there were two other candidates. So, I mean, clearly there was a competition. I mean, yes, I'm there now. Um, and for me, the only issue for me right now is to ensure that I'm successful as the candidate. And more importantly, to help the PNM win and to give full, total, and absolute support to our present political leader and prime minister, Dr. Rowley. You know, I always say that you are truly an example of grace under fire, that you've always uh, maintained a very soft approach to your leadership. And, you know, I have to bring in the conversation about females and women entering yes. uh, the political guile. Uh, we see more and more women now being a little braver to enter this political space as one who has experienced the good, the bad, the indifference, and the ugly in politics. Uh, what do you want to say to those who may not know you as Penny the MP or may not know you because you've been out in the UN for a while. There's a new crop of voters, uh, many who will be voting for the first time in 2020. What do you want to say to them? Well, I mean, I'd, I'd say probably both to the young people and to the, um, to the women as well. I mean, one of the um, experiences that I've had um, recently in a while at the UN um, I have been the president of UN Women um, and recently elected to the uh, Global Gender Champions that based in Geneva. Um, and, you know, many women, because of the experiences that they have had over the years, will have absolutely nothing to do with politics. I mean, so often I've spoken to young, spoken with young people, even at, um, in, a, in the United States, they would ask ambassadors to go out to school um, and you would just do a, a simple poll and inquire from young people, you know, would you like to get into politics? And you could say almost 95% of the time you will not see any hands, uh, you know, popping up. But that also speaks to the politicians and, you know, what is it that we have been, um, what, is, what, what is our leadership, um, what are we saying to young people, what is their perception of us that so many young people often want don't want to do anything with politics and for me that's one of the things that i would like to change mm -hmm. it's one of the reasons i've always been in politics because i believe that um it is such a great opportunity to serve it's such a great opportunity to have 
that um, special police are going to the parliament to debate and argue and to demonstrate that notwithstanding the fact that you're on opposite sides, it does not mean you cannot agree to disagree, it does not mean you cannot respect the opposition. Um, and what you do is always remember that you're serving your country, you're serving your party. Um, and if as a young person or as a woman, you honestly believe that you have something to give to your country, something to give to your party, and you want to do something different, politics is an option. It, for me, it is still a very honorable profession, and I have thoroughly enjoyed my politics. My final question, because I know we're against time, I also know that sure. you, I, you know, I have to ask, I always comment on your demeanor, and I've said it a, a few times in this interview. How do you maintain your calmness and and just 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 your the, the trademark of your personality that that very calm, measured approach, in spite of being dragged sometimes? And you know that politics in Trinidad is very adversarial. The Westminster system, by nature, is meant to be one of fighting, one to be opposing and supporting, depending on where you sit. How do you find yeah. the middle ground and keep and keep your head above water? My final question. So, you know, I guess I could ask you the same question. <laughs> I mean, you have been able over the years to develop that skill as well. But a lot of it has to do with keeping focus um, and enjoying what you do. Um, and I think that once you believe that this is, I mean, I do believe it's part of my calling. I do believe the comfort with which I am able to enter the political arena. Um, and ignore a lot of detractors. I think, you know, you have to pray a lot about your involvement in politics. You really have to like it and you really have to believe that you are where you are because that's where God has placed you and that's where he wants you to be. Um, he therefore gives you the strength um, and he gives you the calmness to be able to deal with it and most importantly, um, to deliver because that is the... the um, a profession through which you can assist so many people to have a better standard of living. I do want to thank you very much, uh, Penny, for taking yeah. your call, and we wish you all the best. And yeah. I know, I mean, just I always say that to see more women is truly heartening, but also that you have been through so much and you continue to be measured and successful and represent uh, those who entrust their faith in you. So uh, we wish you all the best in this one. Yes, I'm looking forward, of course, to coming on your program at some time. I mean, I'm in quarantine. Yes. To a physical interview. And of course, just to finally say to of course, the political leader and prime minister, Dr. Keith Rowley, and the screening committee to thank them for giving me another opportunity to serve ARIMA, the party, and the country. I want to thank you very much again. Uh, that's Penny Beckles, and she is returning. And I think you could tell from the smile on my face, I do, I do really and truly like to see when women are winning, because I always say when one woman wins, we all win. And uh, no matter where you sit on the political divide, uh, we really do need to see more women serving at higher levels in this country. We take a short break. When we come back, we'll have more for you. We continue to interface with the women who are changing the direction, the dialogue in this country. Stay with us. Thank you.